like to welcome you all to this event around Spain and the US and its role as hubs of executive education. During the next hours, we will have the opportunity to address a key issue regarding the nation's development and progress, the training and education of business leaders and the support of entrepreneurial talent. We are all agreed about the utmost importance of attracting talent to the economies, as this is one of the keys to competitiveness for companies and sectors with high value added and technological content. A study by Duke University has estimated that around 25% of engineering and technology companies established between 1995 and 2005 in the United States include at least one founder, chief executive or president born outside the country. In Silicon Valley, this figure rises to 52%. Our foreign investment promotion agency, Invest in Spain, has organized this event, which aims at fostering a shared vision between the United States and Spain on the importance of the availability of good business schools and of developing policies to attract talent in our respective countries. We are privileged to have today two fascinating panels, absolutely top-level panels, the first uh, with top representatives from U.S. and Spanish leading business schools um, and the second with U.S. and Spanish entrepreneurs trained in these business schools. Attracting talent is of the highest importance to any country's economy as it is one of the keys to competitiveness for both companies and sectors that require a high level of education and technological skill in their workforce. Business schools in both Spain and the U.S are a focal point for talent attraction and the training of new entrepreneurs. For this reason, Invest in Spain organized a seminar in Boston in May of 2009. This seminar fostered an important discussion to develop a common vision between the U.S. and Spain on the importance of utilizing business schools to attract high-level global talent. Mr. Uh, Clark Callahan, maybe you would like to start with the first topic. Um, how has globalization changed executive education? Globalization is a key priority. We have a strategy statement that we update every year at the Tuck School, and globalization is one of the key themes. Education, higher education, is actually a true uh, globalized industry at the moment. Employment growth is going to come from, it's going to come from startup companies, from young companies. Um, so as a matter of public policy, in order to support rising standards of living, there have to be more startups. And they have to be in technology because they have to have high value jobs that are being created. So probably the challenge for business schools is to develop a competence in playing, in using different learning and education, education methods that actually can be spread worldwide and still keep on a coherent way of doing things. Yeah. It's the academic equivalent of the Airline Star Alliance or One World Alliance, which is a network of institutions that have already committed themselves to the questions of entrepreneurship as a central part of their educational model. Um, but globalization actually forms part of a longer term strategy. Um, you do not become global overnight and, and just having global students or global faculty or uh, a traveling circus because you take your class around the world. Uh, interdisciplinary learning grafted to uh, very serious education and business that I think will make the new partnership uh, we're developing with IE and the executive education model a, a unique one and an important one for the future of international executive education. I think all of you acknowledge that uh, your business education has contributed in some part to your entrepreneurship, both in the formal side of the curriculum and also the networking uh, possibilities that it allows. And let me start with talking about the definition of entrepreneurs, because when many people think about entrepreneurs, they think about smaller companies, starting companies, founding companies, um, being in a garage, um, being in a small place and creating something brand new. That is certainly an important definition of entrepreneurs. But I would call myself an entrepreneur despite the fact that for most of my career, I've actually spent it at large companies. And it was the breadth of that education that gave me the confidence to go into fields 
than I knew very little about upon entering those fields. But from the experience of building a company from the scratch, which is probably the toughest experience that you can have, uh, I have to say that it really gave me the capacity to know, not to do everything right, but to know what needs to be done. Uh, and there's a lot of companies that die because they don't know what needs to be done. And they don't know that there's, there are things that are like cost controls or um, cost accounting. Um, and, and once you realize it's over, it's too late. After being an entrepreneur, I always say that I would rather be a street vendor or a taxi driver than go back to corporate life. I always give the same three advices to people who are thinking about becoming entrepreneurs. And I think that the first one is to think big. I mean, there is no point in taking all the risk, in putting your career at stake to do something small. You have, even if you start a, a very small company from a garage or something very small, attack a big market that's growing, attack with an idea that you know, can create millions of dollars in the future. Don't go after a small market with very <coughs> thin margins, where you know, there's lots of very niche players. You know. My second thing is don't be afraid. Most people are always afraid of being an entrepreneur. And I think that being an employee is as risky, if not riskier. And most people don't realize that you know, when you're an employee and you leave business school, you, you can be employed for 10 years, 12 years, get a mortgage, and, you know, uh, work your life, and then be fired when you're 45, and you know, have a huge problem. And the third thing is uh, lower your costs. Most, I mean, the, the one thing that uh, makes many people not become an, an entrepreneur is cost of opportunity. I always talk to people who have great ideas, who want to do something, but they have this thing, oh, I, you know, I cannot lower my cost of living, you know, I will have to, you know, move houses, or, you know, how do I do to be an entrepreneur when I'm making so much money and such a company? This idea that the faculty are there and they teach and the students are there and they learn, it needs to be more of a collaboration. Be typical students in business schools now have been out typically working for a period of time and they can bring certain things to the classroom and I'd like to see in the business school particularly when they're focused on entrepreneurism to bring the entrepreneurs in and to make the try to achieve the status of incubator but more of a collaboration instead of teaching learning this is what we tell you 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 learn it now go out and be entrepreneurs bring these people together without such an agenda and let them exchange ideas and really try to to do something uh, together. So make it a more collaborative effort, I think, would be helpful. Uh, during the last nine years, I've been focusing in innovation management in the, in the mobile applications arena, and six of them as entrepreneur. And I decided this uh, when I finished my MBA in Asade. During this, uh, during my MBA, uh, probably I get something that maybe call us fresh thinking, some kind of inspiring the environment where uh, move me uh, out from the, the comfort zone. Everybody uh, lives in, in, a, in a comfort zone where uh, we to, uh, to work in, in big corporations. And in, in that moment, uh, I realized that it was very interesting to be in the creativity side of the companies. Thank you very much. Thank you again to Invest in Spain for the organization and thank you, of course, for the wonderful panelists. It's been a great occasion, I think, and a very interesting morning. Thank you. <laughs>